Hey y'all, welcome back to Bread at the Wire. Well, Keeneland is in full swing after Friday's opener. And so Saturday, we've got a late pick five that's got a lot of Breeders' Cup implications. Uh, the late pick five has four stakes races, and three of them will be tied into the Breeders' Cup pick six with Santa Anita, and we'll have a posting on that later. But for now, let's take a look at the pick five. So this is the Keeneland Late Pick 5 on Saturday, October 7th, and it comprises races 6 through 10. Uh, three of these races, the 7th, the 9th, and the 10th, are also part of the Breeders' Cup Pick 6, and we'll have a posting on that later. Leg 1 is race 6, and it's the Woodford Stakes. It's a grade 2 run at 5.5 furlongs, and that should be on the turf. Sorry about that. A 3-year-old's and up, and uh, this is a... Um, this is a pretty contentious race. Uh, you've got a lot of horses who want to do the same thing, and uh, which makes for an interesting field. There's not, per se, a lot of early speed. Uh, Coppola, I'm kind of upgrading. He's more of an EP, but I have a feeling in this field that they'll gun him right to the lead. Dale Romans likes to do that. Uh, so he'll probably be the, uh, the pace setter, but uh, I don't think he's... Uh, I don't have confidence that he can uh, he can wire this field. Uh, if we look at the EPs, we've got quite a few selections. Uh, Bad B. Brian, uh, we're going to throw him in here. He's coming in third off the layup. He's a hard knocker. He brings it every time. He's been at the graded stakes level, and he gave Caravel earlier in the year all uh, he she could handle. And uh, uh, this may be the kind of field that he is uh, can be more effective in. Um, it's um, usually a little bit outclassed in the uh, in the other graded stakes he's running, but this is a field I think he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of peers, and uh, being on the inside, he'll have uh, be able to save quite a bit of ground. So if he can get a trip, I think he's got a chance. Uh, Eyewitness is one that uh, I've always liked as a horse; has been progressing steadily until the last race, and uh, if you go back and watch it. Uh, Eyewitness had to check pretty abruptly in the stretch, but it looked like uh, there was plenty of horse there and uh, uh, could have uh, could have taken down. That uh, was a sugar. Uh, I'm sorry, the name escapes me, but it was a uh, it, it was fairly crowded up near the stretch, and, and Eyewitness looked like uh, that he had enough to win the race, but for the traffic issues. So uh, this one, I think, still has a lot of upside. And uh, being by Wesley Ward doesn't hurt. I like Eyewitness in this race. Our shot is another one that is a, is a hard knocker, brings it every time. And um, I'm a little uh, little concerned that maybe a regression is due, but has run three straight uh, nice races. And uh, I think fits here, and I think this one we have to think about. Coffee Maker is the other Wesley Ward, and... This one is on a uh, forward trajectory as well. And I may like Coffee Maker a little bit more than Eyewitness. Um, a little saltier, and it uh, is in really good form, and I think it's poised to run a really nice race. So uh, Coffee Maker, I think, won uh, both Wesley Wards. I don't see how you can leave him off. He's the king of Keeneland in turf sprint. So uh, definitely one to think about. And then we got the Foreign Invader living the dream. Now, it's rather interesting here. I think they basically just want to get a, uh, a start on U.S. soil under him. But he's already in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, he just won his last race and did so. I think the, the field, there had to be at least uh, 18 or so in the race. And it was a straightaway. And he got off the lead and he held it all the way through pretty convincingly. So uh, that was a group one, uh, which is uh, pretty... Uh, a hell of a lot better than our grade ones on the turf. So, uh, really impressive effort. You do have to wonder if maybe they don't want to give him, uh, have him at his very top for this race, given the fact he's got the Breeders' Cup turf sprint coming up. But I think class-wise that he's uh, kind of towers over this field in many respects, and I think it's really hard to leave him off the ticket. Leg two is the seventh race at Keeneland, and it's the TCA Sprint Championship, a grade two, run at six furlongs for three-year-olds and up, fillies and mares. And uh, this is pretty much a two-horse race, in my opinion. Uh, there isn't much early speed. You're probably not going to get a lot from Static Fire or Happy Soul. 
Uh, so the, the two most prominent horses in this race, Wicked Halo and You You Girl, should be just rating right off the pace, and then it'll be a question of which one of them is good enough, in my opinion. Wicked Halo, I've always really liked this horse, and uh, it's nice to see this one finally get a race without Elite Power, Gunite, uh, Matarea, Goodnight Olive, uh, any of the other marquee sprinters, uh, where she's just a hair below. Uh, not very much at all, but uh, it's got a feel that she should be able to handle. And uh, I think uh, it wasn't, uh, had her last race was a little bit of a disappointment, but uh, I think she needed a race after a pretty long layoff. So Wicked Halo, I think, is the logical win candidate in this race. Uh, second one would be Yu Yu Girl. Uh, her most important asset to me is stamina. She can go short, she can go long, extremely versatile. And when you get these high-powered sprint races, stamina really comes in handy because there's usually a pretty hot pace on the front end. Not certain you're going to get that necessarily here, but if there is a, uh, a, a duel between her and Wicked Halo, maybe her stamina can get the job done for her. So Yu Yu Girl, I think, is the other logical one. And then if we're looking for a price, let's throw in Fire on Time. Uh, this one is kind of runs in a good race, bad race pattern, but... Last one was a, a pretty solid effort coming off the layoff. And second off, I think it's logical that uh, she could very well run a solid race. I'm not sure she's good enough to beat Wicked Halo or Yu Yu Girl. But at a price, uh, if you're looking for one, maybe one to consider. But I think this is a two-horse race. Leg three is the eighth race. It's the first Lady Stakes, a grade one, run at a mile on the turf for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares. And uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, I think this is a one-horse race. In Italian, I, I find it hard that, uh, to believe that uh, she can't pull this one off. Uh, she'll be controlling speed. And uh, at the shorter distance, I think that uh, this is a good tune-up for the British Cup. And uh, I, I think she'll get on the lead. And I think she may have learned her lesson, or Chad Brown did anyway from uh, the start the Diana Pryor where she kind of took her foot off the gas a little bit in the stretch and it cost her. That's not going to happen again, I don't think. I really like in Italian in this spot. Kind of the wild card in the race, and I'm not going to use, but uh, Evie Jets, I think, is the, uh, the wild card because she has uh, she proved in her last race that she can rate and come from off the pace. Now, uh, if she goes to the lead or tries to, uh, I think she loses, and if she comes from off the pace, I think she loses because I think there's others a uh, little classier that can uh, that can beat her. But if she does go to the lead, might soften up in Italian a little bit, and that might be enough because there are a couple of horses in here uh, who look pretty good. Uh, Gina Romantica, I you know I note that uh, Brennan Walsh has a horse in this race, and Tyler Gaffleone is his A rider, yet he stays. Uh, Chad Brown's got him aboard Gina Romantica. This is a horse who has been uh, progressing steadily, and at four years old, there's more room for improvement, and is firing fresh and needs this race more than some of the others to uh, to get into the Breeders' Cup. So Gina Romantica, you're definitely going to get a price, and this is one maybe to watch out for as a sleeper. Uh, White Beam, we know what this one can do. Uh, it's another Chad Brown. This is uh, Chad Brown's got, I believe, four in this race. And uh, beat in Italian last time certainly uh, is moving in the right direction. And coming from off the pace uh, has a, will have every chance, particularly if Heavy Jets decides to get keen on the lead. And that might, uh, again, soften things up a little bit and give White Beam a, a chance. So uh, I think White Beam is worth a look for sure. And then I'm going to use, uh, or just uh, uh, talk about Jumbly from the Closers. Uh, Jumbly is a horse who uh, they had a lot of uh, high hopes for or in, uh, over in Europe. We heard a lot about him at the Royal Ascot, and he, and he didn't really fire terribly well. Came over here and got a decent third, uh, but then went back to England. And uh, the race he just ran in, in the Matron, uh, he, you know, he was, I mean, to say that he was outclassed, uh, you know, you, you had uh, Tahira, Rogue, Millennium. Uh, there were a lot of really classy horses in this race, and he finished fifth. Uh, it was kind of a, 
uh, a flat race, I thought. Uh, he was mid-pack, covered up, and uh, closed okay, but not great. However, it was his first start back in England, and now he comes over here, and it works the same in Europe as it does here. This one's coming in third off the layoff, and so uh, I think we can maybe expect better. And again, if there is a pace uh, meltdown, uh, if there's one anticipated, I'm not sure there's going to be. I, I just don't think they're going to try to, every Jets is going to try to uh, to tangle with an Italian, uh, an Italian to cut above technical analysis. So uh, I think she'd probably lose. But if that does happen, uh, and you think it will, Jumbly is a pretty good option uh, being a closer coming from off the pace. But all that said, uh, those are the horses I think could factor perhaps but I think in Italian is definitely the one to beat here. Leg four is the race nine. It's the British Futurity. It's a grade one run at a mile and a 16th for the two-year-olds. And for many of these, this will be the first time around two turns, which is always uh, the thing you got to pay attention to. And it's kind of a guessing game a little bit with some of these. But uh, from this group, which is uh, pretty good, and you notice that there's, a fair amount of uh, early speed in this race. Uh, of those, I'll take Timberlake. Uh, I think that uh, he showed a lot of grit in the hopeful with a red-hot pace. He was still able to hang in there and get a really good second, I thought. Uh, no shame whatsoever. Showed a lot of class, and I think this horse uh, could very well get on the lead and wire this field. It's entirely possible. Uh, Just Steele will have something to say about that. But uh, he kind of wilted in the hopeful and uh, might be uh, probably is outclassed by Timberlake, I think. And uh, uh, so I, I kind of have a feeling Timberlake will be, would be able to withstand anybody else who wants to run with him. Uh, and uh, being by Brad Cox, he's 29% first route, so I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. Pedigree-wise, no problem. Uh, awesome road. Uh, we're throwing in here because it's a, a Brad Cox as well. And uh, the first root angle. This one came off of a pretty nice maiden score first time out. Uh, I think it's a big tall ask to go into a grade one off a maiden win, uh, even though they're two-year-olds. But uh, you can't overlook that uh, what Cox can do with two-year-olds. And so uh, I think this one's more likely for under, but uh, we'll throw them in the mix. Uh, West Saratoga from the EP column is a horse I wasn't that high on early, but when you go back and look, uh, after that last, uh, after the last win, uh, you notice that this one has improved steadily with every single race, and as the class levels are increasing, he's getting better, and that's exactly what you want to see. You've heard me say that many times before, and I think West Saratoga is a bit of a sleeper in here, and, uh, you know, sometimes uh, it's a funny thing with two-year-olds, and, and maybe... If Timberlake doesn't fire all the way, I think West uh, West Saratoga is one that could take advantage of it being from off the pace. So I think this is one that you have to consider. Locked, uh, I really like a lot. I think this one has got a ton of talent and the sky's the limit. After that last race at Saratoga, the maiden, he just inhaled that field and just showed a really awesome turn of foot coming around the turn. Uh, I think this one is uh, poised for a big race. And uh, I really like his chances. Uh, he's going to have to fight off Timberlake, which is going to be a tall order. But uh, I think this one's up to it for sure. The only thing you got to worry about is uh, that with uh, sometimes the two-year-olds will bounce a little bit off a big effort. And uh, that's entirely possible. Locked just ran a huge race. But uh, he may not need his total best to win this. I just think he's a really positive uh uh, positive candidate, positive win candidate for sure in this race. And then we'll go to the wine steward. Wine steward hasn't done anything wrong. Uh, he's undefeated. And the thing that's most impressive about wine steward is he's had to fight for every single win. And, you know, you go back to that old saying, uh, if you want to look for a champion, take the one who had the hardest road. And the wine steward kind of fits the bill here. Uh, coming from off the pace, if, if just Steele and Timberlake, uh, hook up or Northern Flame decides to just, uh, they just send him from the get-go. That could upset the apple cart a little bit, and uh, Wine Stewart could be right there. So uh, I think this is a very contentious race uh, in that you've got a lot of different ways to go with those five. And uh, I think any or 
four out of them anyway, uh, can definitely win this race. Leg five, the last leg of the uh, late pick five, is the tenth race. It's the Coolmore Turf Mile. It's a grade one, running a mile on the turf for three-year-olds and up. And uh, this is a pretty uh, interesting field, I think. Uh, you'll notice there isn't uh, a whole lot of early speed. I've upgraded Stitched a little bit because I think uh, they got him listed as EP, but I think he's, he's more of an E. I think he'll get to the lead and uh, just try to outrun everybody. Uh, I'm not certain that that's possible, but he's awful tough, and uh, he's a hard knocker. I just think he's maybe outclassed a little bit in here. Uh, a tone uh, from the EPs should be right uh, behind him, I think. And the tone needs this race more than some of the others do that are already in the Breeders' Cup, and we can't lose sight of that. Uh, he's coming in a third off the layoff, and that's a good angle for Mike Maker. Uh, this one's entirely capable of running a big race to win this and may get first jump on some of the others being only a mile. Uh, he'll be able to uh, to get to the lead uh, when Stitched uh, backs up, if, if he does. And uh, Atone has a shot here. Indestructible is interesting coming over from Europe. Uh, the couple things in watching his races that I noticed, uh, he gets... He gets keen early and then he tends to flatten out uh, as the race progresses but a couple things I noted when watching them first and foremost that he seems to run a lot better when the turf is firmer his subpar efforts have been on soft turf and that's a lot of times a reason that they'll ship a horse over here is to get firmer ground so uh, I think that's a plus in his favor second thing is a lot of the races he's been running in have undulations in them and uh, a lot of times they'll start a race uphill, and uh, I think that uh, that doesn't seem to suit him terribly well. He doesn't seem to like it. So getting back on a flat surface, I think, is to his advantage. So uh, indestructible is one that uh, maybe you want to watch for. And again, he's got to qualify to get in the Breeders' Cup. So uh, this is a race that he needs, and uh, he might surprise. Uh, up to the mark, of course, if he runs back to the form he had prior to his layoff, uh, he's the winner here. There's no doubt about that. But do keep in mind it is at a mile. It's a little shorter than he has been running at. Uh, and he's tuning up for the Breeders' Cup turf. So uh, I don't expect that he'll run in the mile. He's going to run in the turf. So uh, he may not be tuned up all the way for this. But uh, if he's on his game, then everybody's playing for second, in my opinion. So you got to use up to the mark for sure. Uh, Annapolis in his last race was the mint million was extremely unlucky. Uh, he was, I think they had plenty of horse in the stretch. He was poised and ready to make his move. And then he had to check extremely sharply uh, in the, in what was a, uh, a wall on the front end and uh, coming into the stretch. And so they, I think once he backed up, they didn't press the issue terribly much. So we can kind of draw a line through that one. He did get a race under him, uh, and so coming uh, second off the layoff, I expect that he'll run a, uh, a good race. I'm not sure that uh, he doesn't really need it. I believe he's already in the mile. So, uh, again, this might be a bit of a tune-up, and uh, but he, he certainly won that uh, merits con uh, consideration. Uh, I just kind of think up to the mark might be a little bit better, uh, a better shot there. And then Master of the Seas. Uh, He's a closer, and uh, he's won at this distance before in the Woodbine Mile, so he doesn't need this race either. He's in the Breeders' Cup. So uh, then the question is, you know, are they going to tune him up all the way, or uh, is, he, uh, is this merely just a prep to keep him in good form uh, leading into the Breeders' Cup? We'll just have to see. But uh, the fact that there isn't a whole lot of pace in this race, uh, coming from off the pace really doesn't work in his favor terribly much. But I think he is good enough to win this race. And certainly if you think that there's going to be a meltdown up front, then he probably has a really good shot at taking this down. So uh, up to the mark, it's his race to lose, in my opinion. But there are a couple of alternatives that provide some pretty good value. So here's what our ticket's going to look like. In leg one, we're going to use two, four, and nine. Leg two, one, and six. Leg three, we're going to single in Italian. And uh, just hope for the best here. 
And then leg four, we're going to hedge a little bit because up to the mark may not be up all the way. Uh, so we're going to use one, two, five, and nine. And in leg five, we're going to do the same. We're going to use one, two, five, and nine. So that's uh, three times two is six, times four is 24, times four is 96. It's a 48 dollar ticket on a 50 cent base. And this one looks like it could come up fairly chalky. So we definitely want to keep the ticket price low. So that's the pick five. I think it's a fairly chalky ticket, but uh, these Breeders' Cup races, every once in a while you get a, a wild card or two in there. So hopefully we've accounted for them in the races where we need to. Uh, I hope our analysis helps you with your wagering, and uh, I wish you the best of luck as always. Um, we're going to have more postings later this week. Aqueduct has a full card of uh, stakes races. Uh, that we'll definitely want to take a look at. It'll have some Breeders' Cup implications. And as I alluded to earlier, there's a Breeders' Cup pick six uh, between Keeneland and Santa Anita. They've hooked up, so it'll be three from Keeneland, three from Santa Anita. And uh, I'll have that for you later this week as well. So plenty going on this weekend. Uh, I hope to be at Aqueduct. And so if you do see me, uh, please stop by and say hello. We can share a cocktail and talk horses, whatever you like. Uh, so uh, uh, a lot to look forward to again. So, if you do like content like this, of course, please like and subscribe. And we do thank all of you for coming on board. And uh, good to have you for the rest of the thoroughbred racing season and beyond. That's it from here. I'll talk to you soon. And until then, be well.